Hello everyone and welcome to my channel this is the 36th part of what if Deku can't stop adopting kids hope you enjoy link to the original story and author in the description. Chapter 196, A Blast from the Past. Yatnin. Futaba stretched as she finished going over some calculations. Sitting down in her office. She'd been pretty busy as of late. With her work being the foundation for several other projects after all. Ugh, Ren's gonna kill me for staying up this late, Fataba said as she drank some coffee. But he's the one who gave me the coffee, so he only has himself to blame. With some fuel added to her tank, Fataba got back to work. Or at least she would have. Shoom. Suddenly a bright flash of light engulfed the room, coming from behind Futaba. Ha! Huh? Futaba stood up and turned around, and saw two figures engulfed in light. And when the light died down, she got a clearer image of the two who had appeared in her lab. One was a blonde teenage girl in a blue dress, with bright blue eyes and a blue headband. The other was a small child with black spiky hair, with red tips. He was wearing a hospital gown, and he looked worse for wear. He was sweating like he was in a sauna, and his breathing was heavy and labored. His eyes were only half open, as it looked like he was trying to stay awake. But what was most notable was the fact that he appeared to be holding a Chaos Emerald. Brrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr
In front of her was a pack of apathy looking right at her with their nightmarish eyes. Ra ha! The apathy roared, causing the girl to recoil in pain at just how loud their screeches were as the grim stumbled towards her. The girl immediately turned around and was about to run back, only to find Protoman behind her, aiming his cannon at her. She turned to her left and saw a hound blocking that way, on her right, a pack of sulfur fish. The boy, although his vision was blurry, could tell they were surrounded. And so he clutched the emerald tight. Don't! Protoman ordered as he ran towards them. Shoom! But it was too late, in a flash of light, they were gone. Damn it! That is an annoying power. Protoman said as he looked around trying to lock onto the boy's signal and finding him miles away in the forest. With that, he ran off to try and catch them once again. XXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXX
although he's still unconscious. Oh thank God, Maria said. Thank you. Thank you so much. If you want to thank me, you can start by explaining a few things, Izuku said, before taking out the Chaos Emerald from his pocket. Like how you got this. That was the most confusing part of this whole situation. As well as the most concerning. All of their Chaos Emeralds had been accounted for. Which could only mean that this Chaos Emerald was not made by them. The gem. My, my grandfather gave it to me. Maria explained her expression darkening and fear filling her eyes. He said to take it and run. Run from what? Izuku asked, becoming more and more intrigued. From G-U-N. Maria explained with a bitter look. They were a private military company my grandfather worked with. But one day they just turned on us and started killing people in the lab. I don't know why. But grandfather just told me and Luda take the emerald and run. We were being chased and then, then everything turned white, and we were in your lab. I see. Izuku pondered, before giving her a sympathetic look, look. I'm sorry for your loss. But at least you and your friend made it out with your lives. He's, my cousin, Maria explained. He has a health problem. My grandfather was trying to fix him using that gem. He said it held powerful energy, with potential beyond anything the world had ever seen. Well, he wasn't wrong, Izuka said. Those experiments probably amplified his quirk, which is why he has so much power. Quirk? Maria questioned. What do you mean by quirk? Izuku gave her another confused quirk. His quirk. Meta ability. His superpower. Superpower? Maria's eyes widened as she finally put everything together. Lu has superpowers. That's how he teleported us. But, how? And why were you calling it a quirk? Now Izuku was even more confused. Because that's what everyone calls them. Maria looked just as confused. What do you mean that's what everyone calls them? Does anyone besides Lu have superpowers? Is that a real question? Izuku was beyond confused. Most of the world had quirks. It was weirder not to have one. How could she not know about them? Where are you from exactly? New York, Maria answered. But I moved to China with my grandfather after my parents died. Izuka took out the crystal again, but it was still green. Proving she was telling the truth. That doesn't make any sense. Unless something's wrong with memory. Ms. Maria, do you know what year it is? How long was I asleep? Maria asked, wanting to make sure she hadn't been in a coma. Three days, Izuku answered. Then it should still be 2037, Maria answered, only to be confused when Izuku and Sai's eyes went as wide as dinner plates. Izuku took out the crystal again, but it was still green, and he looked back at Maria with a dead serious expression. Ms. Maria, do you truly believe that it's 2037? I, did. But you're making me doubt it. Maria answered honestly. When were you born? Izuku asked her. 20, 2020, Maria answered. Izuku looked at the crystal. Still green. That's, oh. Sir, I know the crystal didn't turn red, but perhaps something may be wrong with her head? Sai suggested, speaking in Japanese to Maria couldn't understand. There was no record of her in any database. Izuku responded in Japan's and the machines didn't detect any damage to her head or brain. I know it might be hard to believe. But, with chaos energy, anything's possible. Izuku turned back to Maria and paused. As he tried to figure out what to say. Is something wrong? Maria asked, getting a bit unnerved by the sudden turn the mood in the room took. Ms. Maria, 2037. Izuku paused was over 200 years ago. Chapter 197, The Gifts of the Present Ugh! Lu groaned as he opened his eyes. My head! 
Lo! Before Lo could get his bearings, Maria threw herself onto him and wrapped her arms around his small body. Ack! Maria! Could you quiet down my head hurts? Lo complained, while also hugging her back and taking a look around the room. He was laying in bed in the infirmary at the Midoriya Foundation. Where are we? Did we escape from G.U.N.? Yes, thanks to you, we're safe now, Maria assured him with a soft smile, but look could see in her eyes. Something was off. Maria, what happened? Lou asked. Where are we? That's, that's difficult to explain, Maria said with a frown. I still don't fully understand it myself. It's probably best if we wait for him to show up. Lou was about to ask who he was when suddenly Azuka popped in. Hey! I see he's finally awake. You two can come to my office, we can talk there. Who are you? Lu asked with an accusing tone, glaring daggers at Izuku. Ah, sorry. My name is Izuku Midoriya. And I own everything around here. here. Izuku explained. I can explain more in my office. Please follow me. Unless you want more time to yourselves, which is also fine. I think, it'd be best if we figured everything out now, Maria said, before looking over to Lou. Lou, please just, let's trust him for now. We really don't have a lot of other options. Fine. Lou hesitantly agreed as he hopped out of bed. The moment he did, he noticed two things. One his body felt better than it ever had before which was strange could have sworn he was dying the last time he was conscious. And two, there were two gold rings around his wrists. What are these? Ah. Those are something I was developing for another child who had a similar issue to you. Izuku explained. I can explain what they are further in my office. Let's go. XXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXX
Izuku lightly scolded, as he patted the head she just formed. Sorry. Wanted to surprise you. Sansan apologized while snuggling up against her father. That's fine, but you need to wait, daddy is doing something important right now, Izuku told her. Please just go play for a little while and I'll give you an extra long hug later okay? Sansan pouted a bit, but complied, bouncing onto the floor and sliding to the door, before sliding under it and out of the room. Izuku then turned his attention back to his guests, who were both staring at him, absolutely stunned. Do you need any more examples because I can dash? Stomp. 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 Suddenly, suddenly, Kai came up to Izuku's window. Dad, I'm gonna go flying. Just don't go too far away, Izuku told him, as Kai turned around and flapped his wings, taking to the sky. Once again, Izuku turned his attention back to his guest, who somehow looked even more stunned. I swear that wasn't scripted. It's just my weird luck. Those are your, children? Maria said like she didn't believe the words coming out of her mouth, and looked at Izuku like he had three heads. Although to be fair that wouldn't make things that much stranger. How dash. They're adopted, let's leave it at that, Izuku told them. Explaining how all this came about is a story that's almost as unbelievable as the time travel thing. And don't ask any questions about my age, that'll only make things more confusing. So people really have superpowers, Lu said in absolute awe before looking down at his own hands. And I have one of these, quirks? Most certainly, although we don't know much about it, Izuku explained. Right now all we can tell is that you can travel through space and time. At least with the help of this. Izuku then pulled out the Chaos Emerald and put it on the table. The gem. Lu quickly grabbed the emerald and held it close. That is something we call a Chaos Emerald, Izuku explained. And it's not something that should exist outside of the Midoriya Foundation. It's something that was only recently created. At least that's what we believed. Until you came along. Grandfather said he created that gem to save Lu. And that it was extremely powerful. Maria explained. That's all we know. Lu looked down at the emerald. He could feel something from it. Power. Power beyond anything he could imagine. But unlike the, the last time he held it, it felt different. Maybe it was because of the bands. That's not much to go on. Izuku pondered. But there's something else that's bothering me. You said you were from 2037, correct? Right, Maria confirmed. It was in 2038 that the first known case of a quirk appeared. In China. Izuku revealed, surprising the two of them once more. That means La had a quirk, a year before the first known case of a quirk ever appeared. What's more, chaos emeralds are massive sources of chaos energy. Which is the energy all quirks draw from. It's what lets them function. So the fact that your grandfather was experimenting with it, before the first case of a quirk came to be, probably isn't a coincidence. You think my grandfather might have been the cause of all this? Maria asked. It's possible, but there's too little information to come to a real conclusion, Izuku explained. Especially because the Chintz government like to hide important information. After that, a brief period of silence filled the room, as all three occupants mulled over and digested the information presented to them. Izuku was trying to figure out how to solve this mystery. Maria was processing that she was over 200 years in the future in a world where her grandfather may have given everyone superpowers. And Lu was coming to terms with having superpowers and what that meant for him and Maria. But after a while, Izuku put those thoughts aside and spoke up. Now that we've gotten that out of the way, I know you two are still processing all this, but I do think we should talk about what you're going to do now. That statement hit Maria like a cold bucket of water. She and Lu were alone, stuck in the future, with no family or friends to help them, and not a single cent on them. Not to mention no identification. You don't need to worry so much, Izuku assured them as he saw Maria break into a cold sweat. I've decided I'm going to help you as much as I can. So you won't be working with nothing. Why? 
Lou asked somewhat rudely. Mostly out of confusion. We're strangers who broke into your lab. But you healed us, let us sleep here, and now you're going to help us more? Why? What are you getting out of this? Lou, be a little more polite. Maria hissed desperately. She'd be lying if she said she wasn't curious about that too, but she didn't want to antagonize the person who was literally their only lifeline. It's fine. You two must be on edge after everything that's happened. You don't need to hold yourselves back that much. Izuku assured them with a smile. As for your question, well there are a few reasons I want to help you out. Aside from it just being the right thing to do. Firstly, that chaos emerald. Lo held the gem closer to him. You can't have it. Don't worry, I'm not going to try and take it. I have a few of them actually. Izuku explained. But I can't say the same for the government. Chaos Emeralds right now are the exclusive property of the Midoriya Foundation. All except that one. So naturally, if you don't have my protection, the government would almost definitely try and take it. And use it for who knows what. Why don't they just make their own? Lu asked. Two reasons. One they don't know how, and two, they don't have the materials. Izuku explained. Because the materials to make these are very rare, and I bought pretty much all of them available. So you're like, super rich huh? Lu noted. Very soon, I will likely be, the richest person in the world, Izuku explained. But putting that aside, my second reason I want to help you is because I'd like to keep an eye on Lu. Lu raised an eyebrow and gave him an inquisitive look, encouraging him to explain himself. As I said, quirks are powered by chaos energy. So often, the more chaos energy a person's body holds, the more powerful they are. This isn't always the case as sometimes it takes more energy to do things that are overall less useful. Like it'd take more chaos energy to teleport two feet than it would to destroy a building. Izuku explained. But that's more the exception rather than the rule. And Lu has more chaos energy than anyone else on earth. Meaning that he will almost certainly be labeled as an OPC. An OPC? Maria asked. It means overly powerful child, Izuku explained. Children with quirks too powerful or uncontrollable for them to live normal lives. Those children all end up here. So why go through all that and get the government involved when we can just cut to the chase? And lastly, you two may be too key to understanding the origin of quirks. Something that's been a mystery for hundreds of years, but the main reason is simply because if I don't help you, who will? Once again, everyone went silent as understanding set in. Here's what I suggest. You two, stay here. Izuku said. Ms. Maria can work as a helper in my facility and earn money as well as get free food and shelter. All the while we can help Lu learn how to use his quirk. What do you think? Lu was about to speak up when Maria put her hand over his mouth. Can we have a minute? Of course. Izuku nodded, before standing up. I'll go see if the food I had prepared for us is ready. I should be back in a few minutes. Is that okay? It should be fine, thank you, Maria said, as the two gave each other polite smiles, and Izuku took his leave. Maria gave Lu a stern look and took her hand off his mouth. Lu, you need to stop being difficult. That person is our only ally here here and you're going to make him upset. I don't trust him. Lu pouted. Don't trust him, or don't want to trust him? Maria asked him. Lu didn't answer, instead just looking away from her. Maria sighed. Lu. Do you want us to die? Of course not. Lu scoffed, still not looking at her. Do you think we can survive in the future without him? Maria asked him. When we have no other friends. No family. No money. No identities. No idea what's changed in the past 200 years. And with no idea what's happening to your body? Lee's expression softened 
as he realized just how heavily the odds were stacked against them. Lo, what if someone tried to hurt me? Maria asked. Almost everyone in the world has superpowers. I would be defenseless. I could defend you, Lu said, as he looked down at the Chaos Emerald. How? Maria asked. Do you know how you did that teleport thing? Do you know how to use your powers at all? Or what they might even do to you? Once again, Lu fell silent. Maria wrapped her arms around Lu. One day Lu. One day we won't have to rely on anyone. But that day isn't today. Okay. Lu agreed hesitantly. Fine. As if on cue, Izuku came back in, holding a tray of sandwiches. Hey, do you need more time? Grrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr
which had a sweet vanilla scent thanks to the candles. It was great, but it was really making her want some sweets. Knock knock knock. Maria pouted, before getting up to answer the door. On the other side, was Fuku, wearing her hoodie over her face. With a plate of cookies in her hand. Um, welcome? Fuku said nervously. Ha! How convenient! Maria thought as she took the plate. She wanted to pat Fuku on the head, but Izuku had given her one main rule to follow. If you don't know what they do, don't touch them. Thank you. Maria gave her a gentle smile instead, which the other girl took as a cue that her job was done, and ran away. Hmm. Must be shy. I'll do something for her later. With that, she closed the door, set down the plate on her bed, and laid back down, before scooping one of the cookies into her mouth. M. Good. Maria said. Normally she wasn't the biggest fan of chocolate, but there were some exceptions. Like these very well-made cookies. That girl has a future in baking. After a few minutes spent relaxing and eating cookies, Maria suddenly got a message on her phone. Ding. A room caught fire, please clean it up once your break is done. Read the text. Never could she have imagined the word a room caught fire would be used so casually. But here it was. This was her life now. How did things get like this, Maria asked as she stared up at the ceiling. Memories flashed through her mind. You must protect Leiden. She remembered her grandfather saying frantically as he gave Lou the emerald. Use this and get out of here. And don't look back. Had he anticipated she'd end up here? Probably not. But he probably knew Lou could teleport. He was probably the reason behind that. Did he cause quirks to happen on purpose? Or was it some kind of freak accident? Why did G.U.N. even try to kill them? So many questions. She may never have the answers. XXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXX
making Maria almost lose her balance. When the light died down, they could see into the chamber again, only to find it completely empty. With a cloud of smoke and fumes left behind. What just happened? Maria asked. I have no idea. But I've been assured it's safe. Shoal said dismissively. Anyway, next you need to do is clear out the fumes. With another press of a button, everything opened up, and fans started sucking the toxic air out of the chamber. And then, for safety measures, set everything on fire, Chol added, before pressing yet another button. Fwash! Suddenly the chamber burst into flames for a few seconds, before returning to normal. I noticed a lot of things get set on fire in this place, Maria said, said. Well to be fair, three of the kids here breathe fire, and one of them is literally on fire at all times. So that's to be expected. Chol said. Anyway, wait a few minutes for things to cool down. And then you're done here. Just make sure to put your suit in the decontamination box before you leave. Does it decontaminate things using fire? Maria asked half-jokingly. Probably, Chol said completely seriously. X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X. All right, do we have any idea what the heck just happened? Futaba asked. Sitting in the meeting room with Mai and Hikari. Why do we have time travelers? We looked into it, and just before they appeared, the Chaos Emeralds started acting strange, Mai explained. They started glowing, but we couldn't tell exactly what they were doing. They stopped this behavior after those two appeared. So there's a good chance the two things are related. Hikari explained. Perhaps their Chaos Emerald was attracted to the energy of ours. Which might also explain how they traveled such a ludicrous distance, let alone over 200 years into the future. So our Chaos Emeralds might have been acting like some kind of beacon? Futaba mused. But that just brings up the question. How the heck did they have one in the first place? Well, we have some theories, Mai said. Judging from our current knowledge, it's possible that whoever was in charge of the lab they came from, discovered chaos energy before the appearance of quirks. And something happened there, that caused the emergence of quirks. So are we thinking the Chintz government did something shady? Futaba said. Maybe the lab exploded and leaked radiation everywhere. And the government hid it because, you know, that's what they do. Wouldn't be the first time they had something potentially harmful, harmful leaking out into the public. Hikari sighed. At least this time it resulted in superpowers, and not a plague. Still that also means the chances of us finding out what happened is low. Not only does the Chinese government like to hide things, but they probably don't even know what happened themselves. Futaba pouted. Which sucks. Let's not be too hasty. Maybe once our influence grows, China might be more willing to cooperate. My mused. I mean, we are going to be curing cancer soon. I still can't believe that's finally gonna happen, Futaba said. Well believe it. Hata said as he walked in. Then, suddenly a sentient human-like blob of water walked in behind him. It was very slender, and the only parts of it that didn't look to be made of water were its bright yellow eyes. Hey, hey, I told you to stay back in the lab, Hatta told them, as the creature looked up at him like a lost puppy. What in the world? Mai looked at the creature in awe and confusion. Is that the hound we melted? What happened to them? Oh, well after I figured out the whole, chaos energy can create sentient life thing, I decided to go back them, and test them a bit, Hatta explained, while petting chaos's head. So I started feeding them fractals until they had enough energy to maintain a form. Also one of them ended up purifying the negative chaos energy by accident. So that's why they're all, watery. Fascinating, they're not dangerous right? Mai asked. Well yes and no, had I answered. They could be. They can absorb chaos energy from pretty much anything. Fractals, plants, animals, people, and chaos emeralds so they could grow into a powerful threat. However, at the moment they seem pretty tame. They kinda remind me of a child. 
Well then for now, we'll just keep an eye on them, my ordered. Don't let them leave the lab, and make sure they don't get near the Chaos Emeralds, or the Fractals. Got it. Now then back to what I came here for. Hadas said. The cure is ready. Chapter, chapter 199, What Can I Do Now? Lu and Mai were standing outside, in a testing field. Off to the side were some employees, with some equipment. All right, today we'll be figuring out how exactly your quirk works, Mai said. Now then, how did you do that teleporting thing you did with Ms. Maria? I have no idea, Lu answered honestly. Okay, think back to what you felt. Quirks are often first used on instinct. So go back to that memory. Mai told him. Lu closed his eyes and thought back. He and Maria were running. They didn't have any idea what was happening. All they knew was that they heard gunshots, and they needed to leave. He didn't know where. Just anywhere other than there. Shwoop. For a split second, he felt his body be entirely wrapped in some kind of warmth before everything went back to normal. Lu opened his eyes and found that he was now a few yards away from where he was before. All right, you did it. My shouted giving the kid a short applause. Did you mean to teleport there or was it just kind of random? La didn't answer, instead, he just focused on the spot a few feet in front of him. Shwoop. In another flash of light, La teleported a few feet over. So you can control it. My said. Nice. So how'd you do it? I just. Wanted to go somewhere, and I did. Lu said, before getting an idea. Shwoop. Once again, Lu was gone, but this time, he was nowhere in sight. Ha! Huh? Mai looked around, not seeing Lu anywhere. She looked over to the other scientists. Where did he go? He's not anywhere close to the lab. One of the female scientists said, looking at the devices. But ma'am his inhibitor rings dash. Shwoop. In a flash, he was back, right next to Mai. Ow. Oh. La hissed, as he looked down at his inhibitor rings, which were glowing a bit. These things are burning me. How do I take them off? Where did you go? Mai asked urgently, as she took a look at his rings. My ru room, Lu admitted. The heat around his wrist was lessening, as the rings cooled down slightly. Mid-range teleportation, Mai noted. Ma'am, the rings were straining to deal with the chaos energy exuded by the teleportation. One of the scientists said. They're back at a safe level, but too much use of mid-range teleportation could cause the rings to break. I keep hearing about these rings. What the heck do they do? Lou asked grumpily. Well, you suffer from a rare disorder that causes your chaos energy to leak from your body. Like a broken pipe causing exhaustion and strain on your body. Mai explained. The inhibitor rings basically magnetize your body a bit to keep that energy from escaping more than it should. So that's why I'm not as tired, Lu said, smiling a bit. Guess the doctor's experiments finally worked. However, chaos energy is naturally expelled whenever you use your quirk. Mai continued. But the more the chaos energy you expel at once, the more trouble the rings have regulating. In other words, while the rings do keep you from being exhausted, they put a limit on your overall power. Well, that sucks. Lu scowled, before easing into a sigh. Oh well. Better than being stuck in bed all day. Right. Well, now we know that mid-range teleportation is a bit much. I'd recommend not doing it any more than twice in a row. My advised. But let's take a break, and then test out how much short-range teleportation the rings can handle. XXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXX
there's something I need to tell you. The way your quirk works is nothing like anything we've seen before. Normally a quirk works by utilizing impure chaos energy. But your quirk gives off pure chaos energy. And when you use your quirk, some of that energy turns into impure chaos energy. And that means? Lu asked, not having a clue what any of that meant. It means your quirk might be able to do more than just teleporting. Mai took a pause, as she tried to figure out how to explain it. Think of pure chaos energy like a block of metal. You can make anything out of it, its potential is endless. And think of impure chaos energy as a metal tool. It's more useful for doing a specific thing, but it can only do that thing. Most people are like a shovel or a rake. But for you, could potentially be a Swiss army knife. Or maybe even more than that. Le felt a few things at hearing that. Excitement, frustration, confusion, and curiosity. So how do I figure out what it can do? I have no idea. My side. As I said, there's never been a quirk like yours before. The closest was a quirk that produced pure chaos energy, but it didn't work like yours. I told you earlier that quirks are often first used by instinct. So you'll probably figure it out by yourself. Still, if there are any new developments with your quirk, then tell me about them. It could help me figure out how it works, and what else you can do. All right. Lou agreed. Later. Wait one more thing. Mai added. Ugh. What now? Lou asked, getting annoyed by all this extra stuff. Next time say all this before you say I can leave. Yeah, yeah, my bad. Mai chuckled before getting on to her point. We have to give your quirk a name. A name? Lou asked with a questioning squint. As if asking if that was a joke. All quirks have names. It's a legal thing, so even if you think it's weird, it's necessary. Mai said. If you'd like I could think of a name for you? How about, chaos control? Le pond that. Well, at least it sounds cool. Fine. Is that it? Yup, you're good to go, Mai said. Do you want someone to escort you BA dash? Snap. Swoop. With the snap of his fingers, Le teleported away. My side. I have a feeling that kid's gonna do something reckless. XXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXX
knocking over the dummy easily. All right. Le fist pumped the air before he teleported over to the dummy to see how much damage he did to the foam dummy, only to be disappointed. Aside from a few light burn marks, the dummy was pretty much unharmed. Lou frowned. Guess the arrows aren't really that strong. With another idea in mind, Lu propped the dummy back up and teleported back to his place. Lu held up his arm and imagined charging up energy in his hand. Yellow energy appeared in Li's hand, quickly growing bigger and bigger until it was twice the size of his hand. Pew! Lu released the energy, and it slammed into the foam dummy, knocking it down again, and taking a chunk out of its shoulder. Ha! Nice! Lu celebrated, before immediately taking aim at the fallen dummy. Pew! 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 This time, Le fired three yellow shots in a row, taking a few seconds to charge each one before launching it. Boom! Lu got another idea. He brought his hands together, and then, he began charging three balls of energy at once. Pew! All three energy shots launched out at the same time, which smacked into the already damaged fallen dummy. Lu smirked, before charging seven energy balls at once. Chaos Spear. Pew. The seven shots launched at the heavily damaged dummy, destroying it even further. Oh yeah, now I'm getting the hang of this, Lu smirked. XXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXX
Lo landed on his back and had to take a second to register the incredible pain he was in. I think I made a mistake. Then he noticed a shadow looming over him and looked up to see Kiba hurtling down toward him. Crash. Lu just managed to teleport away just before Kiba slammed into the ground, creating a small crater from the impact. The black-haired boy appeared in a nearby tree where he could take a moment to just breathe and contemplate his next actions. All right, so she's stronger than I thought. No big deal. I can handle that. What's wrong? Too scared to face me. Kiba taunted. In response, Lu teleported behind her, grabbed the back of her head, and then teleported them miles into the air. Oh, Kiba said, as she realized she'd let her guard down. Lo let go of Kiba, and teleported back to the ground, directly under her. He pointed his arm up at Kiba and charged up a red blast. Meanwhile, all Kiba could do was brace for impact. Chaos Lance. Lo called, as he unleashed a big red blast at Kiba. Kiba could faintly see a red light, getting closer and closer, until she realized it was an attack. Ah, uh, sh dash. Kaboom. The attack landed, creating a huge explosion in the air. Slam. And to add to it all, Kiba then slammed hard into the ground, making an even bigger crater than the one she made before. Kiba laid face down in the dirt, her body covered in wounds and blood. Ha! Lu had teleported away before Kiba landed, so he teleported back and stood proudly in front of her. Had enough? And that's when Kiba's hand shot out and grabbed his leg. Not at all. Kiba then jumped up and lifted Lu into the air before slamming him into the ground. Ack! Spit flew out of Lee's mouth as the air was knocked out of him. Slam! 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 Kiba started smashing Lu into the ground repeatedly, lifting him up and slamming him down like a human hammer. Swoop! Eventually, Lu managed to get over the pain long enough to teleport them back into the air. However this time, Kiba still had a grip on him so he couldn't teleport away by himself this time. So Kiba pushed him in front of her as they started hurtling toward the ground. It's now or never. Lu thought. Boom. Suddenly, energy bursts out of Lee's feet, like jets from a rocket, and they rocketed forward. What the? Kiba cried as they went flying through the air wildly, as La had no idea how to really control his foot rockets. They went up, down, left right, in loops, in circles, they flew everywhere with no control whatsoever. Slow down. Kiba shouted as she got dizzier and dizzier. I'm gonna puke. X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X. So Ms. Maria, how was your first day? Izuku asked, sitting down at his desk with Maria standing opposite to him. I honestly don't know of any words that could describe what I went through today, Maria said. In a good way or a bad way? Izuku asked, not at all surprised by that answer. I have no idea, but the pay is worth it, plus I don't really have any other options. Maria sighed. Yeah. Well on the bright side, you get a day off tomorrow, kind of. Izuku revealed. I'll have you go with Sai into the city, to try and find more people to do your job. I don't want you getting overwhelmed, and I'd also like you to see the city for the first time. I see, thank your generosity, Maria said, doing a short bow. Seriously, without you, I might have died already. No pro problem, Izuku said with a smile. Also, when I say to find people, I mean so in the most random manner possible. Excuse me? Maria asked, not quite understanding what the hell that meant. Hiring people normally is not really a good option, due to all the organizations after my head. So I typically hire people in abnormal ways. Izuku explained. I hired Sori after she broke onto my property, caused a panic, and destroyed a good chunk of my security before she revealed she was here for a job. The fact that that doesn't surprise me as much as it should and that is worrying, Maria said. Get used to the unexpected, Izuku told her. 
and you'll find your time here to be a lot more pleasant. Crash. Suddenly, Lu and Kiba came crashing through the roof and landed on Izuku's desk, destroying it and bringing them to a halt. Ow wow wow. Both kids groaned in pain as they lay on the pile of broken wood. Maria obviously jumped back in shock, her hand over her mouth as she was currently too shocked to move. Izuku on the other hand, didn't so much as flinch, before pulling out his phone. Hey, Joel, get someone in my office to take Lu and Kiba to the infirmary. Also called the Yurarikas and get one of my spare desks out of storage. Thank you. Chapter 200, What Lies in the Past? Makeup? Perfect. Clothes? Stylish. Wig? No one could tell it wasn't real hair. Sheena took a deep breath, she'd been looking at herself in the mirror for who knows how long. But it would be worth it. She had to look perfect for what was coming next. Speaking of which, it was about time she stopped stalling. Sheena closed her mirror and put it back in her pocket, then looked back up at the door in front of her. All right, I can do this. After mustering her courage, she knocked. Knock knock knock. A couple seconds passed, and then, the door opened. Hello? Knees said. Thump, thump. Immediately Sheena dropped to the floor in a dog's pose. I'm so sorry. Who are you? Knees asked, extremely confused by the scene unfolding in front of her. Ah, yeah you probably wouldn't recognize me, Sheena said, giving a nervous smile, before getting back up, and taking a few steps back. With that, she quickly turned her hand into a scythe for a second, before turning it back. Nisa's eyes went wide, as she finally realized who was in front of her. You're the grim reaper girl. Yeah, oh man my nails got messed up, Sheena said, as she quickly pulled out some nail polish and started fixing her nails. You're, you look different, Nis nice said, stating the obvious. Thank you, I try really hard to keep up this look, Sheena said as she finally finished her nails. Anyway, I am really, really, really sorry for attacking you. I was scared, and I didn't trust you, and well to be perfectly honest I still don't trust you but it was still wrong to attack you like that. It's fine. Nis nice sighed. I, don't trust me either, although I still wish you hadn't scared me like that. Wait, why don't you trust yourself? Sheena asked, very confused by that statement. I think, I'm not me. Knees answered nervously. Or at least, the me I am now, isn't the same person as I was before? Because of your memory loss? Sheena didn't really know where she was going with this. No, I mean literally. Like there's someone else, inside me. Knees fidgeted a bit. Sometimes I hear a voice. It's my voice, but I'm not the one talking. Other times I just black out and wake up in other places. And then, during the attack, I accidentally breathed in some of Fuku's fear gas, but I didn't hallucinate, at least I don't think I did. I could see everything that was happening but I was watching it from outside my body. Someone else was talking to Fuku and moving around in my body. Oh, oh. That sounds terrifying, Sheena responded timidly. Have you talked to Mr. Midoriya about it? Nee shook her head. I'm, I'm scared. What if Mr. Midoriya doesn't trust me anymore? I don't think that'll happen. Mr. Midoriya is the nicest guy I've ever met. He'll help you no matter what. Sheena encouraged her. You should tell him. I don't know, Nee said, still looking very unsure. Well, if they find out about it later, and find out you've been hiding it, it'll probably be worse than if you just told them about it from the start. Sheena pointed out. That's true. Nee's thought about it for a minute, before coming to a conclusion. All right, I'll tell him. I don't really like keeping secrets either, so it's probably for the best. That's the spirit. I'm sure things will turn out A-OK. -okay. Sheena encouraged her. XXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXX
Despite all the mystery around what happened that day, Le knew that much. But if Le had been there, he could have fought them. He doubted bullets or explosives could hit as hard as Kiba, and he could teleport and shoot lasers. He could definitely save the doctor. He came this far into the future, so what was keeping him from going back to the past? Le looked down at his wrists. But they'll have to go. He set down the Chaos Emerald beside him and then adjusted his rings. Ding ding. The rings expanded a bit, slid off his wrist, and fell to the ground. Lu took a deep breath. All right, time to go home. He then reached to pick up his emerald. Only to grab nothing but air. Ha! Huh? Lu looked to his side, where he had placed the emerald, only to find it gone. My ap apologies, but you were about to make a most unwise decision. Lu looked behind him and saw Giza standing in his doorway, with his chaos emerald in hand. Give that back. Lu demanded, jumping onto his feet and getting into a combative stance. I'm afraid that's not an option. If I do, you may very well get yourself killed. Giza sighed as he looked at the emerald. I advise Midoriya not to let you keep this. Something this powerful should not be in the hands of a child. Give. It back. Lu repeated as he started charging up a chaos spear. Now. I can see you're not willing to listen. Giza sighed. Fine, I wll play with you for a little while. Come. Pew. Le shot out a chaos spear at Giza, but the rat man ducked under the attack and grabbed Lu. I would rather not damage the facility, Giza said, before he promptly threw Lu out the window. As Lu was hurtling towards the ground, he teleported, reaching the ground before he could accelerate much. Giza then jumped out the window and landed gracefully on his feet. You have little experience with combat I see. Growling. Lu growled in anger before his body exploded with red energy. Chaos boost. Scope. Lu teleported behind Giza and tried to kick him in the back of the head, only for Giza to duck, swerve to the side, and kick him in the back. The boy tumbled to his feet. The attack hadn't done any real damage, but it was extremely annoying. Chaos arrows. Le shouted as he unleashed a massive storm of energy arrows at Giza. Good grief. Giza sighed as he started dodging the arrows, which tore through wood parts of the house behind him. I said I wanted to avoid damaging the house, and you go and do this. Honestly, what a stubborn child. Giza then threw the emerald up into the air. Le stopped his assault and immediately teleported to the emerald. But just before he could grab it, Giza jumped up and threw sand in his eyes. Ack! Lu immediately started rubbing his eyes, trying to deal with the extreme irritation, while Giza grabbed the emerald back and landed on the ground once more. Shall we end this here or are you keen on wasting more time, Giza said as Lu fell to the ground in front of him, still unable to see. Gar! Bastard! Lu pointed his hand in the direction he heard Giza in and shot a chaos spear, only for Giza to sidestep it. Giza took a few steps back and waited for Lu to clear his eyes. Ack! Lu groaned, his eyes still hurt but he could finally see again. Damn it! Lu jumped back onto his feet and rushed Giza with his tremendous speed and tried to punch Giza in the face only for Giza to tilt his head to the side. He tried to kick him and Giza ducked, grabbed his leg and threw him to the side. The boy landed on his back but quickly pulled himself up and glared at the rat. Just slow down. Chaos arrows. Lu unleashed another wave of chaos arrows at Giza. Giza was ready to dodge them until suddenly they sped up significantly. What? The arrow slammed into him, creating small cuts, burns, and bruises all over his entire body, and causing him to drop the emerald. To Lu, it's as if time itself slowed down. He and his attacks were still moving at normal speed, but Giza and the falling Chaos Emerald were moving in slow motion. Lu stopped his attack, both surprised and confused as to what the heck was happening. After a few moments, he started walking forward, towards Giza and the emerald which was still falling. Le grabbed the emerald, and then looked at the slowed Giza. 
I can slow down time, awesome. The next moment, he felt really light, and then everything went black. XXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXX
I could totally save him now. I have superpowers. Powers you just learned about and barely know how to use. Maria pointed out while looking like she was trying not to rip out her hair. Do you even know if you could go back into the past to begin with? Well, I went forward, so why wouldn't I be able to go back? Lou argued. Because we don't know if that's how it works. Maria shouted. Why would you ever assume that traveling through space and time would be that simple? U M. Maria rubbed her face before taking a deep breath and a good few seconds to gain her composure back. All right, so let's assume you can travel back to the past. Despite the fact that we have no evidence that you can, but let's just assume. You get back to the lab, and then what? I beat up those G U N guys and saved the D R. La said. Wrong, Maria said. Because do you remember the condition you were in when we first got here? You were dying. You couldn't even stand. If it weren't for the technology of the Mitteria Foundation, you would have died. If you went back, you'd just be in that same state and die along with everyone else. But let's assume that somehow you're not in that state and you can somehow fight against the GUN agents. What's next? If your trip to the past didn't kill you, then going back to the future definitely would, and you likely wouldn't even be able to get this far. And if you stay in the past, you have to fight against all of China with powers you don't understand. And even if you left China, you'd still be in danger because literally every county would try to dissect you to figure out how your powers work. With each sentence, Le backed down more and more as he realized just how stupid his plan was. And all that without mentioning that you'd be leaving me here alone. Maria pointed out, tears forming in the corners of her eyes. Don't you think I wanted to go back and save Grandpa too? Don't you think that was one of the first things I thought about? I asked them. I asked the scientists who are the most knowledgeable people on Earth about this subject, and you know what they told me. 0.0000000347%. Those are the chances of us being able to go back. Not even going back without you dying, just going back at all. And you just tried to do it with no thought whatsoever. Okay, I get it. Le shouted back, tears forming in his own eyes. It was dumb. Do you? Do you really? Maria asked him, her tone almost desperate sounding. Like she was begging. Ever since we've got here, you've done nothing but lower our chances of actually surviving. From trying to piss off the one person who can help us, to recklessly trying to go back in time without a second thought. Do you want to die? This isn't a game. I know this whole ridiculous thing seems like one of your manga, but it's not. This is real life. And if we mess up, we're really going to die. Do you understand that? Do you really understand that? The room went silent. Save for Maria's intense breathing as she tried to catch her breath. Lou remained silent as all the anger drained from Maria, and she just sank back into a nearby chair, looking utterly defeated. He's gone. Grandpa's gone. Grandpa, our parents, our relatives, our friends. They're all gone. It's just you and me now. And I don't think I could bear to lose you too. So please, for the love of all that is good, live. Eat good food, learn new things, play, train yourself. Anything that doesn't get either of us killed. Please. I'm sorry. Lou apologized, looking down at his bedsheets, unable to look Maria in the eye. I'm just, everything's just, I don't. Before Luke could finish his thought, Maria wrapped him in a hug. You don't need to finish that sentence. I know what you're feeling, and I don't know how to describe it either, but I do know this. No matter what happens. No matter how insane things become, we have to keep going. Together. All right. Together, Lou said, finally hugging her back. That will be it for this part. I hope everyone enjoyed. If you did, please leave a like and comment. If you want part 37, if you want to hear more from me, subscribe. I hope to see you all in the next one.